You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Lucas Zanna on United States FM Network. Here we go, guys. This is Lucas Zanna. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom uh, on KTOX 13:40 AM and also on United States to the FM Network. As you know, this is the hour about guns, okay? We talk about pretty much everything from training, uh, products, ideas, prices. As you know, when I bring you people here, I don't even bring you sponsors, really. I try to bring you information that I really think can help you out in making more educated uh, decisions or when you buy a product or when you buy a gun or even just to learn. Simple as that. I would like that every one of you has the most uh, important and solid information out there and then you can decide. Now, you know, just a few days ago, exactly last week, it came to my attention, somebody sent me a link of uh, a product, of a brand of ammunition. That was kind of interesting because this ammunition was about pretty much uh, drone, drone munition. Now, I don't know anything about it, you know, I must tell you. The, the brand, that the company that uh, supposedly does this product, and I will ask right now soon to the, to the CEO, uh, it's called Snake River Shooting Products, okay? But I want to learn, I'm here to learn, I want to find out if this product is really something that um, worth to look into it, maybe just a great marketing idea, don't get me wrong, that would be great enough for me. And um, maybe we have also a little talk about guns. And uh, just to let you know, guys, his name is Casey Betzold. Hope I pronounced the name right. Casey, are you there? I'm here. Nice to meet you, Casey, and thank you for your time. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, give us a little bit, first of all, I want to be sure I got it down right. What is the company you represent and you are uh, talk? We're talking today today. What is the company? Uh, the company is Snaker Shooting Products. First of all, thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, thank you. The company you, you you said is Snake River Shooting Products. That's correct. And one of our brands of ammunition is drone munition. Okay. Uh, which we have for uh, for use with drones. So, Perfect. You're the president, correct? I want to just, I never assume. I want to be I, sure. I am, yes. Perfect. So what, what is located this company? I like uh, American companies, especially when it comes to guns and ammunition. Where are you located? Uh, the company is located in Emmett, Idaho. Okay. Uh, just outside the capital city of Boise. Okay, great, great. So this is uh, an American company. And what do you do? You produce, uh, um, let me be sure I got it right, ammunition and also some other products besides ammunition? Uh, most of it's ammunition products. Um, we're partnered with companies for some other things, but what we produce is ammunition. We, we produce the, the Team Never Quit line of ammunition with uh, partnered with Latrell. Um of uh, the, the Lone Survivor from the movie that came out a couple years ago. Mm, okay. And so that's that's a big project that we have going on, and then Drone Munition, a brand new project that we have going on as well. Perfect. You know, I must be honest, I this is the first time... Uh, I heard about your company. I'm very glad because I'm here to learn. That's one of the things I like about this show. It gives me the opportunity to learn a lot about the industry also. And I like to hear there are always, or at least hopefully, there are new companies like yours producing locally ammunition that we need so much. I, I watched some of the videos. It seems like you have a very good quality product. You know, uh, I mean, they are not just some general target ammunition. It seems like you got very good stuff. Now, Specifically, you know, what really brought my attention was this uh, drone munition. And uh, and I want to make a premise here. I know you put also in your email, and I want to be sure everybody got it down. I mean, when you see something flying over your yard, before you start to shoot it down, uh, always think about the safety of the neighbors, and more important, also think about your state and local laws, okay? Uh, I'm not telling here because you have a state, excuse me, you have a drone ammunition allows you to shoot everything flies over your roof. So just be sure. That's something that we want to remind. But Casey, tell us a little bit about this specific round for shotgun, if I understand. What is, why is it so specific and why is it so unique? And um, why should we consider to buy it? Well, what we did, you know, Luca, with the, with the initial thought process of the product, what we were thinking about, uh, we were sitting with a company that is working on uh, aerial targets. Um, and they're based here in the western United States, and we were at SHOT Show in January in Las Vegas, and, and they they have controlled aerial targets. So they fly them, they control them around, mm -hmm. they're meant to be fired at, and they fly them around a range, and it's it's uh, it's a new type of target shooting. Mm. And there's also a more serious component of it, too, as far as training aspects goes for, um, 
for specialized military training as well. So they have ground targets, air targets. They have a bunch of different things that they have going on. Specifically with the air targets, they had come to us and asked us if we could build a specialized shot shell of a specific weight and and uh, their uh, length and so on and so forth for for use in in, um, in shotguns for shooting the aerial targets. Hmm. And so as we put that concept together, we looked at um, different names for the product, and one of the names we came up with was drone munition. And the reason for the concept as we as we created the product, um, what the reason we liked it is is one. There's a market for it with the targets, with the aerial targets, uh, and two, there's a, the drones are in the in the news probably as you know and see and hear all the time, uh, almost every single day with something going on with drones. Sometimes mm. some of the stories are positive, but most of them are negative for misuse of the product. Flying close to airports, flying over the top of burning fires on the freeway and impeding firemen, uh, flying over up here where I live, they've been flying over the top of forest fires and and uh, making it difficult for aircraft to get in and, and drop fire retardant and, and fight the fires. And so um, I'm a former military guy, and, and we look at things through the eyes of, of potential threat. So mm-hmm. as we've seen this misuse, we also have concerns about people misusing them in a, in a threatening way. Um, obviously, impeding firemen's work and, and that sort of thing is, is dangerous and frustrating. Um we're more concerned with, with people strapping things onto the drone. So what they're doing right now is cameras. And you mentioned it specifically right up front, which I appreciate a lot because, you know, everybody, um, part of the pushback we're getting on the product is, is, well, it's illegal to shoot a drone down for the, for the reasons of privacy. So mm-hmm. why are you, you know, why are you inciting people to, to uh, go out and shoot drones down? And our response to that is, is the same every time. First of all, there's a lot of surrounding discharges of firearm for anything that you do. Um, for example, if you are a, a waterfowl hunter and you want to hunt geese, mm-hmm. then uh, then you can have a shotgun and you can have uh, a load of ammunition for geese and you can have a permit and you can have your your goose stamp and your hunting license and they can be goose season. But if I walked out my front door in my neighborhood and there's a goose on my step, I can't legally shoot that goose <laughs> because... It's a it's neighborhood, and I can't discharge my firearm there. So everything else can be lined up, but I can't do that. So, so for example, we think the regulations are coming for drones with regards to privacy concerns. The same as if a peeping Tom walked up into your, into your yard and looked in your window at night, that's against the law. But right now, if a drone does the same thing, it's not against the law. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, there's no real law to cover that. You can call the police and say that you're being hassled, um, but... But there's no way to really trace that or track that properly. There's concerns, I should say. So, so while I can't walk outside of my neighborhood and or even in the country mm-hmm. and shoot a drone down right now legally, um, it does generate a conversation for that. Now, if the drone is causing a self-defense concern, um, then there then there is a legal application to to defend yourself, the same as there is if a person is threatening you. So, um, there is a real discussion there to have about it. And, uh, and partly, you know, that's why we went with the name and the branding that we did and the focus of the product. So I think it's a great idea. I I I think it's a great idea, by the way, because, you know, everything that can encourage to sell ammunition, I love it. Okay. And uh, I leave, I think we are living in a very interesting times. I agree. Uh, by the way, there was a gentleman that he was, um, arrested because he shot a drone uh, just out of his house. I think it was in Nevada. I'm not sure exactly, but just a few days ago. Uh, but the, yeah, po- yeah. the point is this one, guys. Every one of us live lives in a different environment, different state, different county probably, with different laws and different also perimeters. You know, for example, I live in Arizona that one of my properties, I got 20 acres and legally I can shoot anything I want, okay? And... Uh, If I see a drone, I know that I can comply very well with my state laws and my county uh, ordinances, and I'm fine. But if you live in another part of the world, just check it out. Now, this is great, you know, because I tell you, I really believe that, um, first of all, the drone could be anything today. I don't care if it's from Mars or can be from a, a, a noisy neighborhood. It's our right to protect our freedom and also our privacy. And also you never know because now drones can also be armed, by the way. I'm sure you already heard that. There was just some experiment. But more important is the concept that, you know, you develop new products to adapt for these new necessities. Now, 
I want to play a little bit devil's advocate here, okay? Because uh, as you know, you're not a sponsor. And even if you were a sponsor, I would do the same. And that's why I like to talk. I love to talk with my listeners. We talk about straight things here. And every time I bring somebody on, it's just because I really want to give them the best. You know, I have a shotgun in this case, any shotgun, doesn't matter. And I have, let's say, number four shot shell um, stainless steel, okay? What would be the extra thing that uh, if I buy your shot shell made just for drones, ballistically, how can you compare to a double O or what I've just said, like uh, number four, for example, uh, stainless steel? I mean, I'm just curious, you know, because I'm sure after all it is a shot shell. There is no any magic formula. Sure, absolutely. That. Absolutely, what absolutely you, fair question. So, so basically what we've done with the way that we put the rounds together, um, there's not, to, on the surface, there's not a lot of difference. So basically what we focused on was making a law enforcement quality mm -hmm. shell that, that has a very tight pattern, um, reduces the chance of flyers, meaning we spent a whole lot more money on shot, on steel shot, and it is steel shot on this first iteration. Mm -hmm. um, it's a double, there's a, there's a two shot and there's a double BB option. Mm. Um, and, and I, I've worked in the ammo industry with, with some of the best companies out there. And as far as, as what's required for law enforcement for pattern, it's very important that a law enforcement officer doesn't have a flyer. Mm -hmm. They don't have a BB that's going to travel outside where the pattern needs to be. Yes. So that's a, that's a big deal to us. Um, like I said, um, the, the drone application of defending yourself against a drone is very difficult to do with a shotgun anyway, under the circumstance of a, of a drone, you know, they, they, if they, if, if a, a drone owner, a terrorist, was to put a, an explosive on a drone and fly it into my home, mm -hmm. I'm not really going to be able to defend myself with a shotgun. You got that. And that's the reason for generating the product and the discussion in the first place. Mm -hmm. So good, as good. far as the product goes, to answer your question specifically, it's a really, really high-quality steel-based shotgun shell on the first iteration. Okay. There are two other technologies in development right now um, for additional anti-electronic, I'll say, um, platforms. Uh, and I can't, I don't want to get into too much detail on it until the product's ready to, re to okay. release. Uh, but, but the first, you know, the first iteration, we wanted to go really high quality and we wanted to see what the response of the market was um, to the concept of, of a new threat that's out there, which we believe that misuse of drones is a, is a real threat. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, you know, I didn't say this initially, but I, I always want to say when I do these discussions with people that, that I personally am not anti-drone. We actually have drones. We utilize them on the range for a lot of different operations because it's great. It's great. Uh, it, it generates great video footage. Mm -hmm. It gives you a really great perspective of range um, oh, applications I, and product testing. Casey, I love drones too. So, you know, my own drones. I have a drones too that took video and photos of my own property, my own animals. But you know, I would, yeah, they're I, great. They're yeah, absolutely great. Really great. cool technology, and and we like we like them a lot. Um, and just like guns, um, I like guns a lot. But the, the threat to gun ownership in this country and anywhere else in the world is the misuse of that product. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the same is true for drones. The biggest threat to drones is the misuse of drones. Exactly, so, exactly. Um, like everything, you know, it's the person right. behind the drone. You know, you can have a drone and have fun and enjoy you, your freedom to use it and also have a lot of practical purposes. But at the same time, you know, there is a point that uh, everybody should understand the, 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 the respecting each other's rights and limitations. I mean, I wouldn't like to snoop uh, with my drone, you know, to my next ranch uh, owner when she goes uh, in, a, in, a, in a swimming pool naked, okay? I mean, that's not my business. <laughs> so that's the bottom line, okay? So that's the point, guys. But I think it's a great idea. I really like it. And uh, I'm quite, you know, by the way, if you go to the website, you know, you have a beautiful website, guys. Uh, it's Snake River, no, Snake River Shooting Products .com, and I will post the link on today's show. It's more than just the drone ammunition. They also have uh, different calibers that uh, they are from uh, 762 by 51. Uh, I see also some 50 BMG 338 Lapua mag. I mean, there is a lot of great stuff. 223. It seems all very great quality stuff. I mean, I don't know prices yet, but it seems like it's very good quality made for professionals use. Now, just to have an idea, because you know, I like also to share prices here. Uh, an average uh, box of this drum munition. First of all, how many come in a box and how much? So the, the easiest way to explain that is they're, they're close to a dollar around at retail. It's up to the dealer to charge what they're going to charge. Okay. Um, for the rounds, obviously, because we don't sell direct to the consumer. We sell to yes. our customer base. So LuckyGunner, um, uh, LuckyGunner.com. 
carries the products now. Mm-hmm. Um, a partner of ours, Axelson Tactical, is a distributor and distributing those products as well. You can find them on their website. Um, we've got several more dealers in process of setting up now that you'll start to see on their website soon. So um, the product is moving well. Uh, there's a lot of um, a lot of interest in the concept mm-hmm. from anywhere from it's funny and we think it's hilarious and we'd like to have a box to um, to we're really serious about it or or do we just want to test it out and see how it does on on targets and other things. So um, and, and back to your initial question, there's two box configurations. So there's a 25 box configuration which is the two shot product Mm -hmm. and there's a five box which is the double bb product so it gives gives people a couple options there where they want to try out a smaller smaller run of product or a bigger run okay see what i like about this product forget about the drones or not you know is to have a good quality law enforcement grade uh steel shots that pretty much can have a a lot of more accuracy than the average stuff that you buy commercially for what i understand you know for example i'm sure you did the, your testing uh with a smooth ball uh, uh, um, with a smooth uh bore okay like let's say a mossberg 500 okay defensive mm-hmm. basic shotgun no chokes um at uh, let's say uh 25 yards uh, what type of uh, normally the group is all open when, when is this exactly you start to get out of uh, what is the, the the distance the magic distance that you start to have your span of radius that is uh, you know outside the typical 20 square inches group that could be in a body average chest of a person i mean i'm sure you did some right. tests. Well, we, and we do we do some silhouette target training um just like law enforcement does with their with their training rounds mm-hmm. uh, or with their duty rounds i should say for buckshot application um and so at your standard ranges of 25 to 30 meters you can stay inside that torso you start to get outside there too far past 30 meters you start to have you know outside the realm of the torso mm-hmm. um and uh, and double BV does a little bit better than that. Okay. Um, and we're actually working one of the app one of the applications we're working on is uh, is is a greater range with with fewer um, projectiles inside, which which is a big deal. Um, it's a big argument back and forth, and we're having a lot of discussion on this because a lot of people have said, "Hey, um, if I shoot seven and a half shot or eight shot, mm-hmm. um, I get a great big pattern, but I have a whole lot better chance of hitting a drone that's shooting by at eighty five miles an hour." Well. Mm-hmm. Like we said at the beginning, there's not a legal application right now for just bla- just randomly blasting a drone out of the sky if they're no. not doing it as, as a target application on your own range with your own target. Mm-hmm. So, um, so we haven't really built it from that perspective. We really built it around the concept of home and self defense because yes. that's the most likely application someone is going to use this product, exactly. whether that be a drone or not. It, exactly. it may not be a drone that's providing that you know that threat. So. We wanted a product that was that was a quality product along there. Um, it's there, there is an application of marketing, obviously, to this. Like we talked about, generating the discussion on drone products um, and and the misuse of drones. I, I I want there to be an awareness of that. Um, I'm a pilot also, so having a you know having the FAA blanketed regulations just thrown on drones mm-hmm. is is only only a partial fix because. The FAA regulations were not written with drones in mind. They didn't exist when they wrote those regulations. So we know there's new regulation coming. And as as someone who is a pro-drone person, obviously we would all like to see those regulations make sense. And if we leave it to the government and the FAA to just do it based on when, when people are misusing the product, I, we can expect that the, that the regulations that come will not make sense and generate a lot more cost and frustration to the drone owners. So I agree. Obviously, it would be great if everybody was responsible with their product. Yeah. So there's an, there's an aspect of if we talk about it now before the regulation comes in 2017, which is when they think they're going to start working on drone regulations, mm-hmm. then we can have a lot better discussion about, about how, how, do we, how do we actually do this the right way. Um, how do we actually protect against the misuse of drones? Because it's really not a shotgun shell that's going to do that. And, and, uh, it's, it's self policing. It's understanding how to track them. It's, you know, what are the regulations and the permits that need to be in place for specific use? Because think about the law enforcement officer trying to enforce anything against a drone user who's got his drone, you know, he's over a quarter mile away or a half mile away from his drone doing something he's not supposed to. Right now, how do you trace that? How do you find that person and and uh, 
well, fight them in any way for something they're not supposed to do. So I, lots of things there to talk about. I agree. You know, at the end of the day, as you said, this is mostly a great self-defense uh, around uh, for really good right. quality. But the point, you know, guys, if you really want to go into defending against yourself, I mean, against drones, uh, then probably the best way would be electronics. I mean, I'm sure some gimmicks coming out pretty soon, the market, the free market will bring out, uh, create some product easily to jam the frequencies that uh, you can create a shield in your right. area of your home and you don't need to shoot anything. It's just going to fall down like a little potato. So I'm right. sure. Uh, yep. And there's been a lot of talk about that. I've, I've yeah. heard everything as simple as training a dog to, to alert when there's a drone coming close to exactly what you just said some sort of a frequency jammer that stops stops drones from flying overhead. Obviously, there's a million frequencies flying around all the time, so that one's a little bit more complicated. Um, but yeah, there's it, the whole point of this is, is sell some products, exercise our freedoms, um, pr put out a quality product, obviously, um, and and enjoy the fact that we have the freedom in this country to to have reasonable discussions still about things and, and uh, yeah, sell let, products and, let's, and let, make a living and let's, have fun. Let, let's use this freedom before they disappear because they are, every day it's it's a battle here as you know very well Listen, Absolutely. let's Absolutely. talk a little bit let's talk a little bit about yourself because you're an interesting guy you know first of all i know you're married you got family so it's good looking guy ladies i'm don't try i'm gonna <laughs> post the photo of him but it's uh, it's busy already okay but anyway you look a very interesting uh, man and tell me a little bit about your background. You know, you say you were in the military. Exactly when did you serve and which branch of the military you serve, if you can tell me? Yeah, sure. I, uh, I went through, graduated from college in, at the University of Idaho in 2001, went into the Air Force as an officer, um, started down the pilot track, and ended up shifting over to the ac defense acquisitions, which is program management and large defense programs. I worked specifically with the uh, the missile programs with the, the nuclear deterrent land-based missiles um, on on sustainment programs for those and, and upgrade programs and uh, left the military in 2007 and and went to work for a defense contractor on the civilian side called ATK. Okay. Uh, AT, ATK, as people know better in this industry, uh, owns or owned Federal and TCI and Spear and Blackhawk and a lot of the big names in the in the sporting industry. Okay. And I worked on the international sales aspect on the on the side of um, of, of the sporting group, which mm -hmm. is what they called it. ATK now has separated, and that that new company is now called Vista Outdoors. They they still have those great brands um, tied up with them. Great company, build great products. Uh, and then I I left there at some point. I went to work for Beretta. Mm. Um, which uh, which you probably know well, being uh, an Italian company, and and um, worked for them for about a year and a half while uh, while we worked on getting Snake River shooting products up up and going, and and um, yeah, it was uh, it's been a fun ride in the industry. I've been in the industry about uh, now. If I can say, as it, and then almost we, eight, eight to ten years. You create a young company right now, correct? This is your company. Yeah, we're, we're about, about. Yeah, we're about four years in. Perfect. This is exciting. I like to see, you know, young men and uh, start from uh, working for corporate America and then you start to create your own identity. This is exciting. I love this. Uh, now, you know, you mentioned Beretta. You know, it's funny because uh, the first gun I remember, my little memories when I was in Italy, I was a child. And normally in, in Italy, you don't see guns because it's not like here. There is no Second Amendment. But the only reason why I had the chance to see a gun close by, because my grandfather, one of my grandfathers, was a policeman, was a police officer in the Italian state police. And uh, I remember the first gun I saw was a Beretta, of course. Um, I had also had to shoot a couple of times, um, but really never really had a chance to appreciate it the way I wanted to. And then I came to America, of course, years ago, and I started to get into guns and I really uh, enjoy guns. And then I started to choose my own gun, okay? I always, always say, be, try to train with one gun because at least the way I choose to do it, I love to have several guns, but at the end of the day, I train with one gun. I pick my gun, it's my Glock 17, or at least the Glock platform. And I feel a little guilty now because in all these years that I've been going through so many <laughs> guns, I never really own a Beretta 92. And I have a lot of stuff, but I need to buy one now. now as I said at the beginning of the show, this show is I don't try to push anything. I just want to have solid, real information for people to make accurate decisions, okay? So you've been working for Beretta. Now you don't work anymore, so it's even better. You know, you've been trying to pimp your products, okay? But you have the knowledge of this product. You know, for example, let's compare a Glock 17, 9mm, with a Beretta Model 92, 
okay, on the market. And I'm here, a, a new person into this gun world, they say, okay, I want to buy my 9 millimeter. Why should I buy a Beretta, in your opinion, if I should buy a Beretta 92 instead, well, instead of a Glock? Interestingly, I, interestingly, I own both of those guns. I have a Glock 17 9 millimeter and I have a Beretta 92. Uh -huh. I have a variant of the Beretta 92. I have a what the Marine Corps variant was, which they call the M9A1 mm -hmm. uh, Compact. And um, and so I have both of those platforms. And being in the Air Force, I'd actually fired a Beretta on the military side several times. Mm -hmm. So going to work for going to work for Beretta was great. No, oh, please go ahead. Hello, are you still there? Yep, yep, I'm still here. Okay, Can go ahead. Me? Yes, now I hear you. Probably some some drones that were trying to interfere with us. Go ahead, continue, please. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, so I so yeah, I have both platforms, um, and I think the biggest difference between them, obviously, everybody has their personal preference. Mm -hmm. um, when you buy you know, when you buy a Glock, it's it's something you can really put through the ringer and 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 um, it it's a it's a preference on the way that it feels. I really like my Glock 17 a lot. Um, I I I think my Beretta is more of a show gun. It's mm -hmm. the Inox version, so it's stainless. Um, so I don't put it in a holster and carry it around and wear the finish off. It's, it looks really nice in my cupboard, and I really really enjoy shooting that gun as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really tough for me to be the guy to tell you where you, whether you should buy one or the other because I actually love both of those platforms um, a whole lot. I'm, I'm just a pro gun guy, so I really no, enjoy I, guns. And normally, you know, um, I, I'm a, sure. I like them all, as I said, but at the end of the day, I chose, especially with the rifle and handgun, I try to train with one platform so I, I don't get, com you know, my body memory, muscle memory, it's there. I mean, sure. from outside, you know. I, what I like about the Beretta, honestly, besides it's a little emotional thing, I need to buy one period now just because I'm, my grandfather is, is probably rolling in his grave, I guess, at this point. I need to buy one. But the point is, uh, what I really like, it's uh, it's the make, the history and also the the, 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 beauty, the beauty. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, I tell you, it's a beautiful piece of technology. I really think it's... Uh, it's uh, the only thing that make me a little bit, uh, makes me a little bit uh, uh, propense more to the Glock uh, that the simplicity and uh, the fact that under stress there are no external safety and it's almost like to have a, a revolver of course it's not a revolver but it's so simple and so fast that uh, the, the beret I, I think uh, should need another level of training probably or maybe just you another. do that's absolutely true absolutely true um, the Glock I, you need a lot of training with the Glock to make sure you don't shoot yourself with it because there's, yes. there's limited safety application to it you need to be familiar with that weapon as well. I would tell any Glock owner, yes. you need to shoot it a whole lot. Um, but if you're going to go from a Glock to a Beretta, and, and to your point of, of training on one platform that you're comfortable with, I think that's very applicable because mm -hmm. when you go to a Beretta platform, you have a safety on the side, and you got to remember to flip that thing. Um, there's a few more applications to that product. It's, it's a very safe weapon. It's one I feel comfortable leaving my wife with at all. Mm -hmm. um, if she doesn't get a lot of training and it's it's there, and I've showed her how to use that, it's got a safety feature. She's she's unlikely to shoot herself with it, which is nice. Um, it absolutely needs a different application of training, a uh, different level, which is um, which is important. So yeah, I mean, uh, I think you're spot on with that. Whatever you choose, guys, train with that and stick with that. I mean, I think it is really important. By the way, the Glocks now they're made in the in uh, excuse me the, the Beretta they're made in the U.S. too. Okay. So in case you know you want to support an American-made product, they're made in the U.S. And at this point, is I really believe it's kind of a little bit pref personal preferences. You know, I still like the you know I don't know I still like propense for the Glock. If I had to pick one gun only to go to war, I mean, I, first of all, I don't go to war with a gun. I would go with a rifle. But still, if if <laughs> if, if, I, if I had to pick one gun to only to own, I would stick with my Glock for many reasons. Uh, also, but definitely I must have a Beretta. The closest thing now that I have to a Beretta that is not a Beretta, of course, is a CZ75, the same type of uh, concept somehow, but uh, doesn't, no, it, it is not going to happen. So I need to buy one Beretta at this point. This week I need to shop for one. Uh, where would you, any place, I normally I shop my guns on different websites and I say to my listeners the name because uh, I just try to give them the opportunity to find uh, great things for great prices. And when I do this hour, I don't even have sponsors. I really try to get real information. For example, one of the best places I found for prices, it's uh, BudsGunShop, BudsGunShop.com for ammunition, for guns. And also, now lately, also Sportsman Guide, that they also sell uh, guns and rifles. Where would you buy uh, your Beretta besides your local uh, gun shop? Any place would you suggest? 
Uh, gun broker is always a good place to look. Um, th- down there where you're at, Scottsdale Gun Club does pretty well with guns, I think, for prices. I, okay. don't, I don't know them well, but I've talked to a lot of people that buy their guns down there. Good. I've never um, been there. And, and but Bud's Gun Shop is a is a great example as well because I think they do pretty well for folks on their guns as well. Yeah, and I remember when they used to do a few years ago, they used to have uh, the G credit card. Okay, it was four years ago. You could apply for this credit card, and you had six and twelve months interest free. Imagine how much I that credit card. Yeah. Uh, it was completely. <laughs> but you know, it felt so That's good. You know, because you could buy great rifles that normally would be a little painful to get them all together, like uh, M1A or whatever. You know, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars rifles. And then you can put them on your little card, and every month you put out a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, and it's doable. So, unfortunately, G now it's it's gone. You know they don't finance any more gun stuff. So, regardless, they're still a great company. They give you layaway and different things. So, listen, I want to thank you. You know, I, I like to see new blood in into the industry. We need everybody. And please, if you shoot a drone. Listeners, if you buy these short shells, okay, and you shoot the drones, and then you get arrested, don't blame it on him, okay? It's your fault. That's one I'd be sure it's clear. But I, I need I need to order some of your short shells, and I really want to try them out. And more important, I like to see, you know, every shotgun I have, more important, every type of brand I have, at least for self-defense, I know the pattern, you know, from, let's say, five years all the way to 25. I want to know where, where is the, the, the pattern when it starts to open too much that it cannot be contained into the um, the chest of, a, of, a, of, a, of an opponent. So I really would like to do a test to get maybe a box of your product and uh, to go to the range and start at three yards, five yards, seven yards, 15 yards, and 20 uh, yards to see exactly with a regular Mossberg 590 A1 how this uh, uh, pattern opens. It's, it's really interesting. I love uh, to try stuff like that. Please uh, say again sure. one more time your product, excuse me, your, your website, and I give you the floor, uh, 30 seconds, whatever you want to say. Go ahead. Well, thanks again for having me on. And it, it's uh, it's important to get on and, and uh, get these opportunities. And if it wasn't for uh, folks with shows like yours, um, it's tough to get uh, tough to get the word out to folks. So I appreciate you guys doing that. And and uh, the product is Drone Munition. Um, the the website is dronemunition.com. It also feeds you right into our our parent company website, Snake River Shooting Products.com, um, where you'll find a lot more things there than just drone and and. Uh, the Team Never Quit project is fantastic. I urge everybody to check that out, and and uh, you know that that money from that project goes to a good cause and and uh, supports veterans of the United States. And so, um, very happy to be be aligned in those various projects that we have, and and uh, we've been pretty blessed and and happy to have good customers and great folks like you, Luca, that cover us on. Uh, on the radio so thanks again for having us thank you Casey okay guys don't go away because after this we have a little break and we're going to talk about news there is a lot of going on when it comes down to news and the assault on our rights and also some training ideas I have a new product that I bought that I can train uh, to become a rifleman in the house safely with a laser for an affordable price don't go away you're listening to Love Guns and Freedom with Lucas Zan. He's a songwriter, a poet, a rifleman, I'm not afraid. and a constitutional activist. I'm not afraid. Italian by birth, I'm not afraid. American by choice, Gianluca Zana. I'm not afraid. And his new CD, Love, Guns, and Freedom. 16 powerful songs on one CD from the heart of a patriot. For download or to order the CD, go to www.lovegunsfreedom.com. That's www.lovegunsfreedom.com. Lyrics for your mind, music for your heart. John Lucasana's new CD, Love guns and freedom here we go guys that was casey beats uh interesting guy i really like him i like to see young blood you know young blood even in the industry uh because we need american-based companies 
that produces not just weapons. Don't get me wrong. With that weapons, they're very important. But more important now, ammunition. Without ammunition, you know, a weapon is just a piece of metal and plastic, okay? And that's the part of the plan of these globalists and uh, the different politicians. They're trying to completely destroy uh, the way uh, that we Americans, we the people, have access to the way to defend this republic and to defend our rights. So, great job. Great job, Casey Betzold, from uh, this incredible new company that I really want uh, everybody to go at least to visit and check it out. This is not a sponsor, as I said. It's a company that I did the research and honestly, I didn't try the products yet, but I, re I read a lot of reviews and I watched a lot of YouTubes about this company and more important about this ammunition. So go to snakerivershootingproducts.com and I'll get some shot shell for myself. I want to try them out. So that's pretty much the story. Now, just to remind you, this show, it is not just uh, kept on the air by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Don't get me wrong. I believe in, in God and, and I believe in, you know, the miracles. But in this case, we are still on planet Earth and we need to help each other. OK, so I really appreciate your help since, as you see, I try to work extra hard to get people out here, a spawn, I mean, get there are no sponsors. I mean, I just bring people here and companies and products that I really believe they can enrich you, they can give you value, they can give you opportunity to, to make the best accurate decisions how you invest your money. So I'm not manipulated by people paying me to say, okay, I gotta kick, uh, kiss your butt now because you're my sponsor. No, I'm here, honestly, I just bring the best I think can be useful to you. But somehow somebody, I need some help. So the beautiful thing about it, I don't even need to ask you for donations or charity. No, I ask you to purchase some of my products. You know what I do for a living? One of the things I do, not only I do, I, I make paintings, but also, of course, I paint with my gun. You can go check it out at Zanna art a r t zannaart.com and you can see my paintings i all paint them with my glock 17 so kind of a unique different way to paint and also the subjects they're pretty on in tune for what we're talking here it's about freedom and also i write songs okay so you don't need to buy a painting in case you don't want to buy painting you don't need to but you can download for just 99 cents less than the price of a cheap coffee let's see if i'm worth a coffee okay as a friend uh, you can buy any of my songs. You can go to Zanna, Z-A-N-N-A, dot U-S. You can see there every one of my songs. I have more than 100 songs that I wrote and published since I came to America. Some songs, they are, you know, about freedom. Some, they are about uh, politics. Some, first of all, the same for me. But also, there are a lot of songs about love and different stuff. So, support the show very simply. There is no excuse. Little credit card, 99 cents. You can do it. Now... Back to the show, back to the topic. Second hour, uh, it's about guns, as I said. There are a lot of great things going on. I think the market is going back to be, for now, for a moment, good. At least when it comes down to prices for uh, weapons. Uh, AR-15 platform, I mean, now you can see stuff for like $550, $600. I mean, there is so much. There is no excuse, okay? I know economy stuff, but there is no excuse. You should really get whatever you need to get in now. Because I'm telling you, as I talked to you before, especially during the first hour, with the economy, the way it's set up, uh, the, we are very close to a big crisis. That's the point. This is not me saying it. I'm nobody. I'm just a guy with an accent from Italy. After all, what do I know? But there are ex experts, economists out there that have been predicting and now you see it already in the news and you can smell it. It stinks very bad. And unfortunately, you know very well when people get uh, desperate, they can start to do desperate things. More important, the government will create more desperation. So be prepared, be ready and have everything you have. And yes, one of the things you must have, it's a shotgun. Uh, remember, the pistol is to defend your person. The shotgun, you defend your castle. And then with the rifle, you'll defend your liberty and your country. So have them all. Get them all. Get them now. I want to remind you one more time, the Chris Chang, my guest that I had a few weeks ago, this uh, expert shooting shooter that also is one of the you know, host or actors, how you want to say, say it, on History Channel, on this uh, Big Shot show. We have uh, this incredible opportunity for one person out there to win one of you guys to win this uh, free diamond membership at front nevada 
$15,000 worth it. It's a lifetime membership that allows you to go to Frontside Nevada the rest of your life and attend any class for the rest of your life. You don't need to pay anything, just the ammunition and the gas money, okay? Normally cost on their website $15,000. It's a big price. And by the way, Frontside is not even a sponsor. Me, myself, I'm paying for it, okay? I'm giving you this opportunity because I would like to have every law-abiding person out there armed and trained. So, and when you train, when you learn, share that training with your family, with your friends, with your neighbors. Don't keep it for yourself, okay? So, how do you win? How can you win this opportunity? Very simple. You go to my website, www.lovegunsfreedom.com, and on the homepage, you can see at the, at the, the bottom left, you can see how to do it. I'm not going to read it now to you. You go there, you check it out, okay? So that's very important. Now, what's going on? You know, we're talking about different things. Well, first of all, there is always more trouble uh, with the United Nations. We know very well what's going on. And I'll tell you briefly, in a few seconds, this document from 2013 that... Uh, it's not really new. I read this probably one and a half year ago, but now I think it must be uh, re put in perspective because things are happening, especially with Obama out of control. Look what's doing in many different issues. Uh, I think really we are facing now something that uh, it could be part of this global agenda more and more to disarm us. There is this document that was a letter, uh, Disarmament Commission, Civilian Weapons Confiscation St Study Group, New York, the 29th, 31st July, 2013. There is also a barcode. And I will post the link on lovegunsfreedom.com today. And this is very eerie because now there is a lot of more information. This letter was bad enough. But what they're trying to say here is pretty much they want to create a framework where these scumbags, them, the United Nations leeches, have pretty much, one more time, pretty much, I'm saying here, created this program, this plan, classification of military-grade weapons, weapons to be made illegal for possession, point number one. Point number two, creation of programs to provide reasonable compensation for voluntary surrender of side arms. I give you a reasonable uh, compensation, some lead, that's what you're going to get. Uh, number three, three, codification of laws to begin the re restricting and strict licensing of concealable firearms. Codification of laws to begin uh, the restricting and strict licensing, sal licensing or hunting great firearms. And uh, finally, codifications of laws to completely mix any and all firearms illegals to own, possess, and use outside the military or military and law enforcement. This is their final plan. This is their final plan. Why you think they never stop? Why you think they try everywhere they can, even influencing the market? buying the federal government buying humongous quantities of ammunition because they want to do everything they can to deny us our right and why why you think you know even it's just our we have all we have access as a regular citizens without going to special you know class 3a license or stuff just a, a rifle semi-automatic rifle but these bastards are so guilty they know very well that millions of us when we discover the truth and we decide we to stand the line, even just as human beings, with a rifle and the will and the training, we could be a great deterrent against their tyranny. So they're so guilty, they're freaking out. So they want to get our guns because they know that when the guns are gone, like happened anywhere in history, and I don't need to remind you history, I already talked about this enough in the past, okay? Look what happened with Hitler. They do the registration and then they go with the gun confiscation. Though that's the bottom line. They want this. Now, for example, I was reading on an uh, Italian newspaper, Il Quotidiano, that uh, at Walmart, there was a news from uh, August the 27th, uh, the Walmart stopped selling uh, weapons, rifles. I mean, that's something I need to verify on the... Um, US news, but that was from a mainstream Italian newspaper. I went to Walmart in, uh, in um, 
Kingman and I still see uh, rifles. I don't know if this is all stock or not, but it's something to keep an eye on it. If you have any other information out there around the states, uh, from different states, please let me know. That would be a very, remember what's going on right now. The government is using corporations to create corporatism. It means fascism. The union between the government fasc and, and, and the corporation, they can pay them off. They can control what they have to do and they will do it. So I wouldn't be surprised that bigger corporations like Walmart it would start to stop selling uh, rifles. And that would be very bad for us because, you know, we need to be able to buy rifles everywhere we can. And by the way, now you already should have your rifles, not even one. But still, still. So this is very important. Now, uh, one thing about candidates, you know, I, as I told you many times, I'm outside the left-right paradigm. I don't believe in Republicans or Democrats. They are both paid off, especially the top levels. They're all part of the same problem. But, you know, I'm trying to be fair. You know, I want to be out there and trying to at least listen to the talk of what people are saying. One thing I tell you about Trump, and I'm not a Trump uh, fan, and I'm not trying to endorse him, but I like at least his uh, style, I must tell you. One thing he said that... Uh, when happened, this uh, latest, uh, you know, I don't know if I still if it's, uh, arch uh, you know, planned or not, but it doesn't matter, this uh, shooting, uh, that Virginia shooting, or that black guy shooting those two reporters. One thing he said, this is not a gun problem, it's a mental problem, okay? And it's not a question of laws, it's a question about people, and I agree. So that's the bottom line. We start to at least start to listen the keywords, and don't get me wrong, you know very well that politicians, that's what they do, they like to talk, and they can change their talk soon after they get elected. But regardless, still, something we should at least uh, consider. Now, one rifle I would like to talk to you guys, you know, before you go into the rifle, because I always try to find new products that you can uh, buy even if you don't have a big budget, okay? Because sometimes the problem is everybody would love to have, I don't know, a beautiful M14, you know, $1,500. But not everybody can afford the 308 like that. But before you go um, somewhere else and think you wait two years before you buy a rifle, buy something between. So I found something that I think it's a, it's a great rifle as um, price, value, and also can be accurate, it can be fast, and you don't need to spend money on magazines because this is one magazine bolt action. Of course, it's good to have extra magazine, um, extra magazines, I meant. So I have one, I own one, and I thought it would be nice to share it with you, okay? It's an Enfield. An Enfield, uh, normally, when you hear the word, uh, listen to the word Enfield, you think it's a, it's a British rifle. Yes, the original, it's a British. But there is also the uh, Indian version, okay? It's chamber for 762 by 51, not 308. I said carefully, even if it's almost similar, it is not similar enough. So this is a rifle for 762 by 51. It's called the Enfield Ishapur 2 a1 rifle okay uh, go check it out because uh, i will do a little youtube about it it's made in india you can find uh, of course also the defective ones i mean be sure you got a good one but what i like about this rifle first of all the caliber 762 by 51 it's a battlefield rifle okay this stuff if i have to have one rifle one rifle only that's the caliber i want because i can do almost anything I can take down any predator in, on two or four legs. And I can reach out much more than the average uh, carabine 5.56. Five, okay? I can still be effective at 800 yards and knock bricks down. Okay? So it's not just also for flesh, it's also for things or for big things. So I like that. Normally, um, this uh, rifle comes with a magazine that there are inside 12 rounds. Uh, you can also find aftermarket magazine. What I like about that, that you can load it up from the top with clips, okay? So it's pretty fast. But the beautiful thing is it's solid, it's wood, the buttstock, it's uh, metal. You can really use it as a tool too. And the price, uh, you can have, I bought mine for a few years ago for about $220. Now you can get probably a decent one for $300, but still, 
great price. Uh, if you, you must be sure that the spacing uh, of the of the of the of the chamber is done right. Sometimes can be problems. So if you buy one, have a gunsmith um, evaluating it. Okay, just be sure everything works. And do not run again the 308, the commercial 308. You want to run 762 by 51 for exactly the problem of spacing because this rifle was made for the 762 by 51. So I tell you. You can read a little bit about the history about this rifle. It's, um, you know, just find it on Wikipedia or whatever. But I'm not here to give you the history. I want to give you the practical things. It's a great rifle. It's uh, affordable. It's very smooth. Uh, bolt action. Very fast. And accurate. Accurate enough. Put a sling on it. And uh, you can defend your castle. At least uh, with uh, as a rifleman would do at a quarter mile. 500 yards. Everybody's going to put their heads down. Okay, so that's something I would suggest you to look into it. So just ideas, as I said, and buy wherever you can find it. I mean, I'm not going to tell you where to buy. You can find it on Gunbroker. You can find maybe a local shop, but just be sure you check the spacing. So that was an idea for the rifle. About ammunition prices, you know, this week there is always something going on and I like to find the, uh, good stuff for the week. Um, for example, there is a great deal, in my opinion, on Botach.com for uh, MacTech 9 mm in brass, okay? Uh, MacTech, they are a good brand, and in brass, you know, reloadable, even, of course, 9 mm it's kind of a pain to reload, but for $209 or $210, you can get 1,000 round, rounds and free shipping. No bad, no bad. If you want to get, instead, the steel case for your rifle, let's say you have an AK-47 or SKS platform, 762 by 39 I would suggest you this week I found a great deal on cheaper than dirt for two hundred and nineteen dollars and fifty nine cents, one thousand round. Now, seven six two by thirty nine, it's a great round, still affordable. But one thing I will tell you, if you have an SKS or a K forty seven, stock it up, because uh, that's the problem. These imports, they're one of the things that really can go down fast. You know, especially with this uh, United Nations treaty, I don't care. Of course, we know that it is unconstitutional and there is no even the support of uh, the uh, Senate so far. But, you know, we have uh, a crazy man. I don't even know if he's a man, whatever. A, a crazy individual, evil devil uh, what bastard at the White House with an agenda that will stop at nothing. And anything, excuse me. So what's happening now? Uh, if they start to say, okay, we're going to start to put, I don't know, 2,000% tax on imports from Russia. Here we go. How are you going to buy your 762 by 39 uh, that you can afford now, for example, like the Tula that I just told you, are cheaper than dirt, okay, for, for a very good price. It's going to cost you impossible. Maybe they're going to stop even the import. So stock it up. Every rifle you have. How much, how much ammunition people ask me? As many as you can afford. Okay, and as I said, I like cement floors. So I really can put a lot. So that's the bottom line. And I know economy stuff, I understand. You gotta feed your family, that's true. But when you start to do your little, you know, um, economy at the end of the month, your accounting, start to put prioritize, you know, priorities, excuse me. Start to see how many, you know, even going out for dinner. Is really that needed right now? I mean, we're in such a terrible situation. I mean, to buy that extra useless coffee, you think is really worth it? I mean, it's up to you. You know, that's what I can say. Now, talking about uh, news, what's happening around uh, the States, and this is exactly what I was talking. I mean, the federal government already has been trying to do it. Now, state and more important, municipalities, they will go out of control, especially in places like Seattle. Seattle City Council advances new gun ammunition tax. Exactly what we were talking about. Okay, so uh, you see, it is not that uh, crazy, this concept. If you think it's never going to happen here, it's already happening. The Seattle City Council is expected to cast a final vote Monday. So let's see, it already happened. I need to double check on legislation that adds new taxes and regulations on firearms and ammunition sold in the city. The legislation which passed unanimously, um, I hope I can say it right, Wednesday by the Education and Governance Committee. Think about the Education and Governance. 
Ah, oh, I need to throw up. I would implement a $25 tax on firearms and a $0.05 cents per round tax on ammunition. I would force gun owners to report a lost or stolen firearm within 24 hours. I mean, I'm always trying to report a stolen firearm, but think about it. $25 on firearms tax and $0.05 cents for a round tax on ammunition. And why not $0.20 cents for a round on ammunition? Why not a dollar for a round? I mean, the sky is the limit after all. Our overlords pretty much, here we go one more time, pretty much, said that they can do it. So it's up to us to stop it. You know what? Let me play a song dedicated to these bastards of the city council of Seattle. I hope there is a special place in hell for rats like you. You know, you are the scum of the scum. I hope you can hear me. Seriously, you are the worst. You know, you're a bunch of commies. That's what you are. Fascists and commies the same way, it's the same time. People don't think it's exactly the same. In their opinion, government is God. And we are just servant to the government. And how you can become a serf, you must be disarmed. That's the bottom line. So you know what? You want my guns, you want my ammunition. I'm never gonna pay a dollar to you or any other body, body out there or anywhere else. If I had to buy a pay for, for a tax extra because you say so, I will become a criminal right now, I'm telling you. And I have a song I wrote, it's called Come and Take It. You're listening to Love, Guns and Freedom with Lucas Zana. Don't go away, ready for our number three. Take it, come, come and take it Yes! 